This week in Hong Kong. This week in San Diego. This week in Madrid, Spain. Since February, we decided to start a project that showcases and unites Filipinos living across the world. And that's why we created This Week in Illustrado. This Week in Illustrado is our weekly show where we give to you updates, news, and slice of life from our friends across the world, Filipino and non-Filipino. Hello everybody, this is Lard Oliver again for this week here in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Hey everybody, this is Mimi for today's episode. What's up to all my fellow Filipino kababayan all over the world. So for this week in Illustrado in Norway. My name is Paolo Benitez. I'm the host and co-creator of this show. I work here at Illustrado Magazine, which is one of the leading Filipino publications, lifestyle platforms, and media platforms in the Middle East. And let me just tell you, it's been an exciting journey so far. Despite what was going on in the world right now, from the comfort of our own homes, we branched out and we got to learn what life was like abroad. This week in the middle of nowhere. No, just kidding. We're still in northern Germany. This week in Vienna. This week in Singapore. This week in Rome. From the bustling city life to chilled out countryside living, we got to see some amazing popular places and hidden gems. Not to mention that we met so many amazingly talented and progressive kababayans out there. Welcome to Singapore Zoo! Aside from the main show, ladies and gentlemen, we did some awesome collaborations along the way like This Week Live, where we invited some of our friends to come and talk live about progressive Pinoy things. We've had subtle Filipino traits on the show, and we even had the pleasure of hosting Miss Universe 2015 via words back also. Hello! Hi everyone! Thanks for inviting me here. More than anything, as Filipinos, we are in charge of pushing our narrative out there. And let me tell you this, while I can't speak up on behalf of every Filipino out there, I want you to know that I think the most authentically Filipino thing to do is to champion our unity through our diversity. And we get this diversity through pushing our stories out there. So guys, this is a casting call for those of you Kababayans and friends who want to share your stories out there. Hey guys, this week we are back again in amazing sunny Ras Al Khaimah and I'm about to show you something of a green miracle here in the middle of this desert. <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty more content coming soon and we'd love for you to be a part of it. This week is a project that helps inspire and give a new perspective to what it's like being a Filipino across the world. As a diaspora kid who grew up in the Middle East, I'm honestly so amazed to find out that so many Filipinos out there are just as progressive as us. And despite what was going on, Filipinos have remained resilient throughout these tough times. So if you're watching this right now, I want to thank you for sticking with us this far. And if you're new to the show, we hope you enjoy. My name is Paolo Benitez. I'm the host and co-creator of This Week, and we'll be seeing you very soon. Moving to Canada, Australia, or New Zealand? Sign up with the Visa Center this October and we'll give you a free online IELTS training. Plus, free IELTS exam with our partner, British Council. Make sure to book your consultation today. Avail our free online or office assessment to know if you are eligible to immigrate. The Visa Center. Shaping a better future.
This week in Sapporo. Hi guys, my name is Mina and I live in Sapporo, Japan. I've been living here for five years now and I work as an English teacher at an international school. Life in Japan can get a little hectic, but it's the weekend, so I thought of taking you with me to one of the best cafes that serves Hokkaido milk. And it's currently 18 degrees and it's pretty chilly outside, but that's not gonna stop us from getting our dessert fix, so let's go. I've been to different places in Japan and I even lived in Tokyo for a year. Tokyo is of course the biggest city and it reminds me of Manila. Kyoto and Osaka are both known for their beautiful temples, scorching summer and savory food. And Okinawa shares some similarities to the Philippines because of the food, the people and the beach. And of course Sapporo holds a very special place in my heart because of its kind people, fresh food, creamy dairy and cold winters. Yukijirushi or Snow Brand is one of the largest dairy companies in Japan and they use 100% Hokkaido milk. Did you know that Hokkaido produces more than 50% of the milk in Japan? Their best seller is a Snow Royal ice cream that was made specially for the emperor of the Showa period and because I wanted to give it a little kick, I ordered Snow Royal Matcha Affogato. Let's have a taste. Mm. The ice cream tastes smooth and rich. It has a creaminess that coats your mouth. It's really delicious. Mm. It's creamy and luscious. The matcha adds a nice bitterness to it without being too overpowering. It also has ankle or red beans and it really goes well together. If you guys are interested in Japan, then please check out my YouTube channel, Mina Ambrosio. And again, this is Mina for This Week in Australia. What's happening people? My name is Ace. This week in New York City, I'm currently in West Village, Manhattan. It's 57 degrees outside or 14 degrees Celsius. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. It's probably my favorite season. You get to wear a jean jacket, maybe some sweater. You get to dress up a little bit. But anyhow, I just got up from work and, and I'm on, on my way to the gym. I guess I'm showing you guys what it's like living in New York City during this pandemic. I'll catch you at the gym. Just some quick gym precaution now. They gotta check your your temperature, and you gotta have a reservation. You only have 60 minutes to work out, and that's it for a day. The only thing with gyms, you gotta wear your mask at all times. I kind of hate it because I run and I can hardly breathe. But you just gotta do what you gotta do. I seriously hate running with my mask on. It's so hard to breathe. Honestly, though, it's so good to be back after being out for for six months six months so the gym opened up like a few weeks ago and i'm so happy to be back So we just got up from the gym. This is my buddy Steven right here. He's actually an OT here in New York City 
he got to witness like the peak of quarantine back in March. Dude, how was that, bro? Uh, I actually got COVID in March. <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> now nah, he's good but, now. Um, yeah, but uh, it was crazy. A lot of people were uh, basically on the ventilator and a lot of people were on the brink of dying. But you, know, you got to do what you got to do in healthcare. But obviously he has recovered. I'm right next to him. <laughs> Six feet apart, bro. Six, Six feet. <laughs> but we're on our way to St. Martin to go grab some food and drink with some friends. We'll show you guys around. Outdoor seating has been opened. So yeah, it'll be fun. What up, sissy? Are you ready to get some Korean fried chicken? Of course. St. Mark's. So I think the best part about quarantine is when they start opening up this outdoor seating. This doesn't used to exist before, but the government, Thank city you. council, <laughs> made this available for everybody to enjoy. Let's go. Hi, hi, hi. Mm. 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 I think I'm just gonna end this video before it gets crazy, but I am very grateful and very happy that New York City has continued to recover and is still recovering. Anyhow, that's all for tonight. This is Ace for this week's Illustrado. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, ace.ny, for more New York City snippets and eats <laughs> and underdeveloped. But hey, bye. Peace out. Deuces. Transaction fee, idinari cash mo na yan. like us good morning everyone I'm Kai and Dee is probably still sleeping right now and I'm now at the Oakland domestic airport about to head up to Wellington for work it's been a while since I traveled for work. Um, last time must be February this year. So it'll be interesting to experience flying again. So in this video, I will show you what's it like to travel again domestically here in New Zealand. At the time of my trip, Auckland was still on COVID alert level 2.5 and was due to shift to alert level 2 the following day. Upon entering the domestic airport, staff will ask you for your itinerary to ensure you do have a flight booked. All Air New Zealand kiosks are operational but ensure to stand on those white line markers when queuing to maintain physical distancing. It was assuring to see that Air New Zealand regularly cleans their kiosks for their passengers' safety. Maintaining physical distancing is asked of travelers throughout the airport. Inside the plane, 
all passengers were seated one seat apart. I said it's important to give this your full attention, even if you fly with us often. You will notice that the safety video does not include information regarding the use of face masks for your safety. If an oxygen mask were to fall down in front of you and you are wearing a face mask, you must remove your face mask before fitting an oxygen mask. That is check engine check. You guys ready? Take off. In-flight meal was not available in this flight, but water was offered to passengers. So just arrived in Wellington Airport, the landing was pretty turbulent. It's a typical Wellington weather with grey clouds, so turbulence is a norm when traveling to Wellington. So that was quite a different experience wearing mask on the flight. I felt a little out of breath. So just be prepared for that and perhaps start getting comfortable with wearing masks along the flight. And disembarking the plane takes a little extra time because you have to disembark row by row but otherwise it's a well run and smooth flight by Air New Zealand so hopefully that's giving you some insight on the tra on traveling domestically in New Zealand. Hello everybody, I myself have lived in Sarah Media for almost three decades now and all I can say is that I'm grateful for finding a second home and family in this beautiful country. Absolutely so much to explore here and I'm thankful to have co-workers and friends who are multicultural as I am. I deeply believe that whatever we may be in the world, we should never forget to respect the culture and tradition of our host country no matter how tolerant they may be. We never forget that at the end of the day, we are still guests in our host country who have embraced us to be part of their economy. Kamusta? Two quick questions. One, how does it feel to have a Filipino friend? It's not about nationality and it's about quality, not quantity. In mindset, of course. So, hooray, Rachel, you're one of these people. Second of all, um, favorite Filipino dish that I tried so far, of course, uh, pancit. And I tried um, jalebi for the first time, and it's uh, quite uh, delicious. I'm gonna try the this Korean um, rice cake. It's pretty new in the market. If it's not good, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> To be married with a Filipina guest, my wife, since 16 years back, is the best things I do in my life. Not because she's a Filipina, because she. And I'm sure the Filipino tradition and the culture and the food and the dresses and the caring, which is the most important. For me, if I come back uh, 16 years back, I would marry the same guest. What's your favorite Filipino food? 
everything. Adobo, Hello, everything. What's your favorite Filipino word? Filipino word? Filipino word. Ako Oh. Po.